Greetings, brothers and sisters. So um, I want to get to Jojo Magoo, who has given a, a sort of an epic gaffe about the tornado, like Jojo Magoo do. But I got a few other things to cover here first. And then I want to get into the whole tornado thing and, um, you know, all of it, right? What this means for the future and things like this. One of my viewers sent me this um, last night or this morning, and it's a throwback to this interaction between Tucker Carlson, a young Tucker Carlson working for CNN years ago, and Jon Stewart when he was the host of The Daily Show. The, the, the thing is, we need your, your help. You're, right now, you're helping the politicians and the, 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 the corporations, and we're left out well, there like to mow our lawns. You just said we're too rough on them when they make mistakes. No, 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 you're not too rough on them. You're part of their strategies. You're partisan, um, what do you call it, hacks. <laughs> wait, John, wait, like, let, me, so, let me tell you something valuable that I think we... So this is um, back when Tucker Carlson was on CNN and a show called Crossfire where they had a liberal and a uh, conservative, and they would argue, you know, a lot of drama, a lot of fake stuff. And John Stewart's calling them out on it. And John Stewart has become one of the biggest partisan hacks. Right? <laughs> you know, not just him, but his legacy with Stephen Colbert and all that stuff, right? With John Oliver and Samantha B. right? So they had John Stewart and then all these people that came off of his show. And they're also liberal. I mean, they're brutal. They're not comedians. They're not funny, right? <laughs> and so for John Stewart to take this position of preaching and being like, you know, holier than thou, and he's done as much damage or more with all these people to create partisan divide. We do that. I'd like to see you something do, valuable. You yeah, no, it's it's. I nice would like when, to, I would when like politicians, to hear it. When, and I'll tell you, when politicians come on, yeah. It's nice to get them to try and answer the question. And mm -hmm. in order to do that, we try and ask them pointed questions. I want to contrast our questions with some questions you asked John Kerry. If, if, you wanna, if you want to compare your show to a comedy show, you're more than no, no, welcome but here's, to. No, no, here's, here's the point. If, if, Kerry that's, doesn't have, if that's your goal, no, it's not. I wouldn't aim for us. I'd aim for Here's Seinfeld. the problem. That's Kerry a very good show. Kerry won't come on this show. He will come on your show. Let me suggest right. why he wants well, to. Well, we have civilized show. discourse. Well, here, here, here's, here's. So, um, you know, John Stewart celebrated John Kerry, who sucked as a candidate, right? Because he was leaning left. And John Stewart's trying to say that he had a comedy show. But back then, his show was seen by a lot more people than news programs. A lot more people got their news from John Stewart than actual news programs. And this was the beginning. You know, this is pre the internets and, you know, the whole truth movement, right? <laughs> Because people were so, like, you know, tired of CNN and MSNBC and Fox and all those crappy news programs that they would rather go to a comedian pretending to give the news. And then, you know, the everything we see now has taken off since then. I mean, it's been even better because, you know, Jon Stewart worked for Viacom and he was a corporate shill and, you know, a liberal shill and all these things. But it was the beginning of, like, this idea of anybody could go do the news, right? <laughs> you didn't have to be some, you know, professionally trained, trained journalist to go and be on there and talk about what was going on in the world. But Jon Stewart, you know, his legacy has been completely tainted by his, you know, becoming a partisan hack, right? Being what he's accusing these guys of. Here's an example of the civilized discourse. Here are three of the questions you asked, John. Yeah. You have a chance to interview the Democratic nominee. You asked him mm -hmm. questions such as, quote, how are you holding up? Is it hard not to take the attacks personally? Yeah. Have you ever flip-flopped, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. Didn't you feel like you got the chance to interview the guy? Why not ask him a real question instead of just suck up to him? Yeah, how you're holding up is, uh, is a real suck up. And uh, uh, I actually was giving him a hot stone massage. <laughs> it as, uh, sounded that way. <laughs> as we were doing it. it you know, it's... It was Tucker Carlson's fake laugh. It's interesting to hear you talk about I felt my responsibility you. to the, you know, I, I didn't realize that, and maybe this explains quite a bit, no, the opportunity is that the news organizations look to Comedy Central for their cues on integrity. So <laughs> right. um, no, that, what, what I would suggest is when you talk about you're holding politicians' feet to the fire, I think that's disingenuous. I think you're... How are you holding up? I mean, come on. You no, no. So he keeps on using, like, this idea of, it being a comedy show, but he started reporting news. 
Like he was actually, you know, doing news, which they is now commonplace. You see it with both Kimmel's and Fallon. I'm sorry, Kimmel's and um, Colbert on you know late night TV. Uh, Samantha B that got her start on John Stewart's show does a complete like political show, right? And John Oliver acts like a reporter on HBO. Like this became where you know comedians started to act like reporters and they were all one-sided. They're all very corporate. They're not talking truth to power which comedians are supposed to do. No, 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 no. I don't but my my role isn't I don't you think. can ask him a real question, don't you think? Instead of saying, you know, I don't think I have. To. By the way, I, I also asked him, you know, where you in Cambodia, but I didn't really care, because <laughs> I don't care because I think <laughs> I it's tell. stupid. <laughs> well, but yeah, but you obviously care about these guys, right? <laughs> but my my point is this: mm -hmm. if your idea of uh, confronting me is that I don't ask hard hitting enough news questions. We're in bad shape, fellas. We're here to love you, not confront you. No, 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 but, but what, what I'm saying nice. is, is this. I, I'm not. I'm here to, to confront you because we need help from the media, and they're hurting us. And it's, yeah. the, the idea is... If they, if they you know, John Stewart's just really unlikable. <laughs> he's, you know, just the way he's going about this, and it's really manipulative and... Um, you know, given all the things, like I've said, that's come out of his show. Let me get this straight. If the indictment yeah. is, uh, if the indictment is, and I have seen you say this, that yeah. uh, crossfire reduces everything, as I said in the intro, to right. left, right, black, white. Yes. Well, it's because, see, we're a debate show. It's like seeing the no, Weather no, Channel. No, 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 that'd be great. A storm I would love to see a debate show. 30 minutes in a 24-hour day where we have each side on as best no, we no, can No, 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 that would be great. And have to, them fight it out. To do a debate would be great, but that's like saying pro-wrestling is uh, John, a show John, about John, athletic I'm competition. Sorry. I, I think you're a good comedian. I think you're... So um, this is where it goes south a little bit. Lectures are boring. Let me ask you Let yeah. me ask you a question on the news. Now, this uh, is theater. I mean, it's, it's it obvious. Is, no, no, it How old are you? 35. And you wear a bow tie. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> so, I do. so this is... No, no, I know, I know. So this you're is right. theater. No, no, let me just go. Now, come on. And come listen, on. I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that you're, that, not, you're not a smart guy because those are... So Tucker Carlson works for Fox now. He's still a part of the beast. He, you know, he puts out a lot of BS Republican propaganda, but he's a lot, a lot closer to being a truther than John Stewart, right? Tucker Carlson has gotten better. He's become more genuine, more sincere. You know, and he's not again. He's not a truther, but he's a lot closer than John Stewart. John Stewart's gone the other way, right? John Stewart and you know all the people that came from his show. They became, you know, shills and hacks and all these things, you know, right? And so there's this moment where John Stewart's trying to say, you guys need to do better. But Tucker Carlson, again, he's still on Fox and he still puts out a lot of crap, right? But he's a lot closer to the truth than John Stewart is. Those are not easy to talk. But the They're thing difficult. is that this, you're doing theater when you should be doing debate, which would be great. You do deb no, it's, it's, it's not, not honest. What you do is not element, honest. Course, what you do is perfectly. partisan hackery. And I'll, and I'll tell you. So this is John Stewart just, you know, lecturing these guys on something that he does, right, that he did, and he got worse at doing it, and then all of his disciples went out and did it even worse, right? They're all putting out disinformation. They're all posing as comedians but acting like reporters, and it's all theater and it's all, you know, it's not talking truth to power. It's going along with this sweeping movement that's coming from the so-called left, but it's not the left at all. It's corporate, it's controlled, it's global, right? And it's people who are trillionaires that are pushing an agenda, you know, <laughs> that these guys are shills for. So then one of my viewers sent me this. I'm... Um new to being vulnerable outside of songs so i think i'm new to being vulnerable outside of songs so it's like like i see a, a lot of pictures of me um so this is a former rapper named machine gun kelly machine gun kelly who now sells nail polish and is taking some of the nail polish that he sells and putting it on drew barrymore in her show 
and talking about being vulnerable. A rapper named Machine Gun Kelly. Like, the irony here, <laughs> that a guy who called himself Machine Gun, this is where he is now in 2021. And there's like smiles on them and I'm always like, it's just weird though because I didn't feel good at all that day. And I, I kind of am sick of smiling on days when I don't feel like smiling and I feel like this odd pressure because I don't want um, like my fans to... You can see he has some sort of Illuminati eye tattoo here and then other things. And looks like some, I don't know, pyramids and stuff here. I would love to just get out of what I'm, t what I'm doing and like. Make... I don't mean to sound creepy, but I like you so much more. Thanks. Yeah, that face is a little creepy. <laughs> Way to go, Drew. Way to go, Machine Gun. <laughs> Have yourselves a day. Here's this guy. He's in Wilmington, Delaware. He's got a cool tie on. It's a little bit somber. He's coming in. There's been a natural disaster, and we have a president, a leader, a man who's, like, on top of the job. Of the fate of their loved ones and the debris that you see scattered all over uh, the hurricane's path. The hurricane's path? <laughs> Did you say the hurricane's path? Uh, the hurricane's path. It says right now President Biden discusses Midwest tornadoes, but really... He's discussing a hurricane that hit, I don't know, did a hurricane hit as well, or is he just confused? He's just confused. Uh, the hurricane's path. They lost their homes, they lost their businesses, and it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. And we still don't know how many lives are lost or the full extent of the damage. But we do know it's a hurricane, right? Or a tornado, one of the two. You know, kind of the same thing, except, you know, totally not. So this is the, um, the, you know, the front page of Huffington Post. FEMA, camp, FEMA chief's climate warning, this will be the new normal. And so he's saying this is the new normal, this hurricane and um, magnitude of recent tornadoes, new normal due to climate crisis. And so this guy is claiming that this is going to be the new normal. You notice over the past, I don't know how long, there's been a lot of new normals, like since 2015 and 16, we've had about 20 or 30, hey, this is our new normals. This is new normal for you. You know, um, there are a couple of things here. Most people in the truth community give way too much power, not give, attribute way too much power to what I call the controllers. I've said this over and over again. Everything is, everything is some sort of, you know, man-made, governmental Illuminati, you know, Mossad, CIA operation or whatever it is, right? That people are always attributing everything to being man-made, right? Man-made birds. The birds are man-made, right? <laughs> you know, it's like the newest ones. And so for the tornado, it's going to be a man-made weather event, which I know there's technology out there. You know, I used to watch that guy, I don't know, a long time ago. Was his name Dutch Sense or something like that? And he had all these patents that he had found governmental patents and scalar squares. My son, one of my sons was watching that. And the government has weather modification systems, right? But what people don't understand, and I don't know what is done by people, what's done by the controllers and what's natural. It's really hard to figure out. Like some things are obviously done by the so-called controllers, but whatever it is, if it's an organic event or something that they've staged, right? Because some people think everything's staged by the you know so-called controllers and some of the things happen organically but if it happens organically or it's staged their response is the same and that is to weave it into their agenda somehow and you know do it through the media that's why it always looks staged because the media immediately tries to spin it in the direction that the controllers want them to spin it right but none of that's important <laughs> None of this stuff is important. Like, you know, trying to get to the bottom of what the, you know, who's behind what and, you know, what their intention is and why they're doing it. Because we've entered into a destructive phase. There's no saving this system. And whether it's self inflicted, of course, it's always self inflicted because when your system goes away from God and, you know, your soul's path and everyone's collective soul's path and, 
it's a system based on the ego, people's collective egos, which is, you know, all egos are potential demon or devil, right? You have your soul and you have your ego. And your ego can be purified. Your ego can align itself with your soul and your soul's path. And you know, your, your ego can connect with God. And that's best case scenario, right? <laughs> you know, but um, most people's egos just grow and grow and grow and become something that eventually the ego is against God, against the will of God. The ego has created its own creation and it is, you know, an abomination of the divine system. And then when you have a system that the whole system's like that, like our system, eventually it becomes insolvent. Quickly it becomes insolvent. And, you know, all the other things that you see going on now, and it has to collapse, right? And doesn't it feel like it's collapsing? Like, it's not just, you know, what the media is saying or the big events that are happening. It's just like, you know, everything sort of played out and there's nowhere to go from here but down, right? In terms of like the system, it's everyone's so entitled and people are so weak and just how people are in general. You know, there's always doomsdayers. There's always people, there's always sky is falling people. There's always people who think the world's about to end. There are always people who say, oh my God, this is, you know, the system's going to collapse, right? You know, my brother's one of these. Like my brother, when COVID hit, he's like, this is it. I'm like, you know, because my brother does the heartfulness meditation. I'm like, you read the whispers prophecies, right? Like we haven't even started yet. You know, in terms of um, the heartfulness system, there's a big event in 2025, 2026, you know, one of those two years. It's a little bit unclear. And once that happens, it's going to dwarf all these other things. And that's the catalyst to a series of tumultuous type of, you know, the weather that we have now, it's going to get much more severe. It's going to be one of these times where there's going to be tectonic plate shifting and ice ages and, you know, drought and floods. I mean, all these types of things. We've had a very calm period of time, at least in our lifetimes. But really for about 5,000 years, the earth has been very stable. But the earth isn't always stable. Sometimes there's solar flares that hit. Sometimes there's asteroids that hit. Sometimes the tectonic plates move. Sometimes, you know, like there's always these things that happen here. And it can get really chaotic really quickly. The earth can be very unstable. And that's the type of period we're entering into. Of course, there's going to be nuclear war and things like this, all these other things that are part of these, you know, prophecies. So it just feels different, right? There are a lot of people who are like, hey, the apocalypse is upon us, right? You know, the apocalypse, because it kind of is, right? There's something going on that's different. Like there's always some fringe people who say the world's going to end. You know, 2012, it's the Mayan calendar. There's always these things out there. You know, Y2K, I mean, there's always things that people can gravitate to and say the world is ending. The system is about to collapse. It could have collapsed in 2008 with the, you know, economic collapse, but it didn't. You know, it collapses when it does, right? You can travel around the world and find ruins of great cities all over the globe. Cities that were, in some ways, I mean, the pyramids are beyond our capability of building some of these magnificent structures and things. The technological development was superior to what we have. And then there's, and, you know, all of this, the civilizations we have, I mean, there's some that are like 30,000 years old, but most of them are 5,000 years or less. Most archaeology, archaeological discoveries are, you know, no, no older than 5,000 years. But there are some stuff out there that's like millions of years old, which they hide and things like this. They're hiding the true history of this planet and the human race, and that is whatever it is. But there are all these civilizations that have collapsed, and this one will collapse as well. It's a matter of when. And a when could be 5,000 years. It could be 10,000 years. It could be, you know, I mean, it's, it's never that long, right? Because if you look at all the great civilizations, they only lasted... 100 years. They don't last a 1,000 years, right? You, know, you see these different countries that are 5,000 years old, and they've gone through so many changes, changes to their language, changes to their culture, changes to the government, changes to what they even call their country, right? I mean, all these places around the world, they've changed their demographics and, you know, 
I mean, there's so many things that have changed just in the past thousand years, never mind, you know, 5,000 years. And if you want to look at our civilization being an extension of the Greek and Roman and British empires, right, these European powers, I mean, going back, I don't know, 500 years, 1,000 years, these various, um, you know, these civilizations, and being an extension of that, like growing into what it is now. So America, yeah, has only been in power for the past, I don't know, what, 75 years or so. America has been sort of the number one power. But it's an extension of these older European empires, right? It's just a part of all that. And it's a very short-lived type of, I mean, it's, it's so dysfunctional and insolvent that the system, it was never going to last this long. Right, this system of colonization and the way that these um, these civilizations treated nature, just cutting down trees. You go to a place in Europe, and there are no trees. They've cut down all their trees. They clear cut them, didn't plant more, and like the trees are gone. Right? You know, you have these places where they've ex- they used up all their resources because they treated the planet and you know God and nature in a disrespectful way. Right? This idea of manifest destiny. But if you look at our society now, our culture, our country, our government, our whatever it is, the people, it's breaking down. Like, it's obviously breaking down. Like, it's heading for, you know, it's like a marriage that's headed for a really nasty divorce, right? I mean, that's what our country and world are like. And so there are going to be changes. There's going to be these, you know, very difficult events, whatever they are, natural or man-made, whatever, you know. I mean, it's all... You know, man is a part of, human beings are a part of God and creation, right? There's all part of a plan, right? Everyone's, you know, participating. So if an asteroid hits the earth and there's, you know, extinction level event, or human beings start some sort of nuclear war, it's all natural in the sense of, you know, it's coming from God's creatures, right? Or, you know, God's asteroid or God's human beings or whatever, so there's just too much um, obsession with the so-called controllers, what I call the controllers, worried about what they're going to do and trying to catch them. Oh, we got to find out why they're going to do and what they're going to do next. We got to stop them. You're not stopping this. You know, <laughs> Whatever way it manifests, our, our world civilization is going to collapse. And it's going to be a very difficult period. We may see some of it. We may see, you know, we, I don't know to what extent it'll be going by the time, you know, all of us reach our, you know, end of our lives. Of course, many of you guys are either younger or older than me. But either way, we're in a transitionary time, right? We're transitioning from a system we're 100% dependent on to something else, right? And so what's really important is what is that something else going to be? Because that something else could be really bad. It could be, you know, back to some barbaric or complete demonic. I mean, it, you know, the whole system collapsing could go on a, you know, could be on a scale of like one to 10 in terms of how bad it sucks and how devastated the planet is. Like we could minimize the damage. Like if we say, all right, the system's going to collapse and there's going to be some big upheavals and things that are going to happen to the planet, right? And so, you know, let's lessen the severity so that rebuilding isn't as hard. And then there's the redemption part. We've got to redeem ourselves as a species, learn from our mistakes, and figure out a different way to build a civilization. I say it over and over again. The next civilization has to come from our collective internal connection to God being guided from within by divinity. You know, I talk about the difference between religion and spirituality. Religion is God is outside of you, and there is a middleman, your religion, that acts as a gatekeeper between you and God. Whereas spirituality, you have direct contact with God within yourself, right? Instead of looking for God outside of yourself, that God is within and you can connect to God internally and you have a relationship with God and God partners with you or you partner with God to manage your existence and to make your decisions, right? This is, you know, the heartfulness system that I do with the transmission, the cleaning, is a system given for this process. And so there can be a system that comes out of our, you know, individual and collective connection to divinity. And that system would be, you know, utopia compared to what we have now. 
or it can go just like, you know, demonic, full demonic and whatever. So there's a choice here. So you can spend your time figuring out why there was a tornado that, you know, went through four states and did uh, incredible damage and that this is, you know, somehow going to be a new normal or something, whatever, right? And you could blame it on weather modification systems by the government and the controllers, whereas other people blame it on climate change. But what's important is it's just another, you know, nail in the coffin of our current civilization. And, you know, what are you going to do now, right? When it collapses and we're in the collapsing phase, what are you going to do to prepare yourself and your children to build something better on the other side of this collapse, right? I mean, that's what's really important. That's where people have to put their energy because one thing is done. Like it's, you know, you have it in relationships, you have it in jobs where you know it's just over. You know, it might take a year before you quit your job. It might take three years before the divorce is final, but you know it's over, right? Like it's just over. And that's, you know, what it feels like with our civilization, right? You can enjoy what's there. Yeah, enjoy what's there, right? I, I'm doing, that's part of my plan. You know, enjoy what we have now, right? Because, you know, it might not be here tomorrow. And also, there are a lot of great things that you can take with you, like tools and any number of things that, you know, once, I mean, people don't understand when the economic system collapses, manufacturing shuts down and whatever, you know, all these manufacturing plants will shut down. That means nothing new is being made and there's no system of buying, you know, there's no economic system of exchange, right? And so whatever you have, you have. Like there's some um, old time truther I was listening to years ago, like 10, 15 years ago. And the guy said, you know, in the future, your wealth will be determined by the size of your junk pile, right? I think that's sort of a famous saying. And so it's something for people to think about. So preparing, right, for what's going to happen, not in some doomsday, fear-based, you know, the world's ending, chicken little type of way, you know, where you're making irrational panic decisions about things that you don't know when they're going to happen or how they're going to happen, right? But just, you know, connect to God. I mean, the heartfulness system, connect to God internally and be open and follow your soul's path and prepare whatever way you need to prepare for the inevitable collapse of the beast. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano definitely reporting for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.